Come on, what's going on, church family? Happy Sunday. Hey, is anybody fired up about what the Lord is doing? Listen, if you don't have fun in church, you ain't doing it right. Church is not meant to be endured, it's meant to be enjoyed. And I hope that your walk with the Lord, that you are enjoying every moment. Sure, there's highs and lows, but overall, come on, this is, this is an amazing journey that you and I get to go on. And to be able to walk through this journey with people is pretty spectacular. This weekend um, has been one for, the, one for the books, to be honest. Cassidy mentioned um, freedom over the weekend, and you saw the video. But it is just an honor. Really, I stand in awe of what the Lord is doing. And I'm just grateful that we get to be a part of it. You and I get to be a part of what God is doing through this house in Austin, Texas, in, in, in the state of Texas, around the world. We get to be a part of that. And I don't know about you, but that fires me up. And that's what, listen, that's what gets me out of bed in the morning, is knowing that God chose to use me, and he chose to use you as well, to go make a difference in the world that you and I live in. It's pretty special. By the way, if you're looking for how many people we water baptized this service, the number was 70. Come on. And again, numbers aren't everything, but numbers represent souls. Numbers represent people's lives that are being changed. And on the weekend, we were privileged to baptize 154 people this weekend, y'all. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Now, listen, I understand um, time management most of the time. Don't ask my wife. But when it comes to church, I understand time management. I understand that we're a little bit kind of behind schedule as far as when I normally preach because we took extra time baptizing 70 people. And so here's my whole point. I'm gonna preach an hour. No, I'm just kidding. I know, I'm just joking. I, res I respect your time and I'm gonna honor your time. I'm gonna get you out of here on time today. But I do wanna share with you today, I feel like the Lord has, has kind of dropped one phrase in my spirit that I've been just marinating on over the last few weeks. And I wanna kind of flesh that out today in front of all of you. And I think that you are going to walk out of here today um, saying, you know what, that made sense to me. And that word, was for me. And to do that, I want to draw our attention to the book of Exodus. And even more specifically, I want to look at one of the, the most influential characters throughout the Old Testament. His name would be Moses. Uh, chances are you're familiar with Moses. Uh, but if you're not, maybe you're new to faith and you're not really sure of his story, or maybe you learned about Moses uh, as a kid when your mom took you to church and um, you're, you're like, hey, I need a little recap. Well, let me catch you up on how we got to where we're going today, okay? So in our story today, you're gonna see that we, we have two different groups of people. We have the Egyptians and we have the Israelites. The Egyptians have conquered and taken captive the Israelites and they've enslaved them. But now, at this point in time, the Israelite population is starting to grow at a pretty rapid pace to the point where Pharaoh, who is the leader of the Egyptians, is starting to kind of get this, like, this feeling in his gut that I need to do something. Like, because if, if things keep going this way, like I see how strong they are, I see their numbers, like there may be something coming in the future where they try to take us out. And I like the way we got it going now. We don't have to work real hard, they can do all the work for us. So, and he comes up with the plan to take care of the number problems. And I want you to see how evil this plan is that he comes up with to solve his numbers problem. Exodus chapter one. Then Pharaoh gave this order to all of his people. He said, every Hebrew boy that is born, you must throw into the Nile River, but let every girl live. So his plan was to kill all of the newborn Hebrew boys because he didn't want the boys to grow up and in strength, mount an insurrection against him one day. And wouldn't you know it that during this, this decree, 
There were two people by the name of Amram and Jochebed who would find themselves pregnant. And as the mother and the father, they would eventually bear a child that you and I would know by the name of Moses. Moses' mother, Jochebed, hid him for three months. And if you've ever had a child, you understand that the first, the first little while, all they do is kind of sleep and you feed them and then they poop and you got to change all that. But, but they don't, you know, they don't get around too much. So you can kind of be, keep a kid quiet for a little. But once they find their voice, and once they get a little mobile, right, you, there ain't no hiding. No. They're going to make a scene. You've taught them. The, they're going to make a scene in H-E-B. <laughs> right? That's the, they, they've been good all day, but you take them out in public, and they act like just, what? Who, are you possessed by the devil? What is happening? <laughs> and so Moses is now three months old. And Jochebed, his mother, does exactly what Pharaoh ordered. She didn't exactly throw him in the Nile, but she did place him in the Nile. And watch how how she does this. Verse 3 illustrates this for us in the second chapter of Exodus. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. And then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. So she hid him among the reeds in the bank of the Nile River. And let's watch how this story unfolds. If you know the story, then, then just kind of be, be like lean on the edge of your seats because this is such a powerful story. Her sister is watching all of this take place. And she stood at a distance to see what would happen. And then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the riverbank. So imagine, imagine this scenario playing out. When Pharaoh's daughter sees the basket where placed among the reeds, she sent her female slave to go retrieve the basket. She opened it, and she sees the baby, and he was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. And then his sister asks Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get the Hebrew woman to nurse the baby for you? God's plan is unfolding. Sure, she answered. Go get the girl. So she went and got the baby's mother. God's plan. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. I love Cassidy preached about this story on, on Mother's Day, and I love, she got paid to raise her own baby. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> so the woman took the baby and nursed him, and when the tri- child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she named him Moses saying this, and this is the meaning of his name, and this is where I want to key in for the rest of our time together today, saying Moses, his name, I drew him out of the water. And Moses' life, his story from birth until death is really one of the most amazing stories throughout the Bible. It's incredibly fascinating. And as you know, Moses would go on to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt through the Red Sea and into the wilderness until his death where Joshua would eventually take over. But one of the amazing things about this story, and it really blows me away, is God's massive plan for the Israelites throughout this entire period. And see, what happens is when nobody thought that God was working, they were in a pretty pitiful situation. It's about as bad as you can get. And when nobody thought that God was working... He was working. When they couldn't see it, he was still working. When they didn't know how or they didn't even want to believe it, he was still working. I don't know if that talks to anybody in the room today that feels like you're in a situation and you don't see God working and you don't see God moving. I've got good news for you. He's working behind the scenes on your behalf. 
And here, here's the reality of it. And this, this is so much fun for me. I love this. He was actually setting up an inside job. Watch what I mean. Think about it. The very thing that Pharaoh was trying to kill off ended up being the very thing that he invited into his palace in the form of this child, Moses. And he himself would give Moses, this Hebrew boy, the finest education in the land. He would teach Moses how to handle himself in battle. He would have gained inside information on how the Egyptians operated. And isn't it amazing and isn't it interesting that the very thing that Pharaoh despised and tried to kill off just happened to be the very thing that would bring him down. Ooh. The thing that he tried to kill off was the thing that God used to bring him down. Watch, watch, watch though. Here's the beauty of it. Here's the inside job. God planted a baby boy by the name of Moses, right under Pharaoh's nose in his own house. And it was the same Hebrew boy that received the best education, that received the best, all the best that they had to offer, all the inside information, the same boy. He wasn't born in anybody else's house. He wasn't raised in, in some neighbor's house. No, 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 Pharaoh, he was raised in your house. And this boy is the one that would end up leading the insurrection against the Egyptians. It was an inside job. I love how God works. And here, when I, when I read this, here's what I felt the Lord kind of whispered to me. And I think it's one of the things that you need to grab a hold of today. And it's this, that if, if he, as in God, if God does this for your enemies despise, if he planted something for your enemies despise, God will do it for your benefit. If he does it for your enemies despise, he will plant something for your good. Let me, let me explain to you what I mean, because I want you to get this. See, sometimes God will plant things on the inside of you that you had no idea were there. God will put dreams in your heart. He will put visions in your spirit. He will put ideas in your mind that you didn't even know that were there. And at the right time, when, when the time is right, he will begin to draw those things out of you just like Moses was drawn out of the water. For some of you in the room today, there's dreams in your heart that need to be drawn out. There's ideas in your spirit that God's about to draw out. Come on, I don't know what he's planted on the inside of you. But I feel that there's a drawing out coming in your world. That God is about to pull some things out of you that you didn't even know were there. Which means when you walk into a business meeting and you're intimidated and you're scared and you don't feel capable and qualified, God's going to pull some confidence out and say, listen, if you'll just trust me, I'm going to give you the words that you need to walk through this. You don't feel qualified to get that promotion on your job. I'm about to pull some things out of you that you didn't even know were there. It's not by your own strength. It's not by your own wisdom. It was something that I planted there. You didn't even know it was there, but you've been watering it, and it's about to come to fruition in your life. Oh, I could preach on that all day, but I got, oh, Jesus, I got 10 minutes left. We got to hurry up. I find it amazing how every one of us can hear this story and read this story and still approach this story and think about this story in so many different ways. See, there's some of you in the room today that hear this story, and you, here, here's where your mind goes. You feel just like Moses being stuck in a basket. You feel, you feel like there's people that don't even know that you're around, like that nobody cares. You feel like you have been hidden in the reeds of the Nile, that nobody sees you for what you really have to offer. 
You've been looking for a relationship and you've been seeing all your friends finding the right significant other, but nobody sees you. Nobody notices you. You've been passed up for the promotion time and time and time again. Nobody, you feel like your life is stuck in this basket with a lid put on top and you just can't seem to break through. You feel stuck. Like nobody, see, see some of us, that's where some of you in the room kind of went when you heard the term basket and being hidden among the reeds. That's how you identified with it. Well, well, that's my life. I feel like I'm hidden and nobody cares and nobody sees me. I just can't get any momentum in life. A place where you feel hidden and you feel stuck and you feel like breakthrough is nowhere in your future. Then there's others of you in the room today who view this story from a different angle, a different lens. When you hear the story of Moses and being in the Nile and being stuck in a basket, you you approach this and you see this from a vantage point of, I've put myself there. You see it as a place of safety, a harboring place a place where you have run to and you have hidden yourself because you're scared and you don't believe in the things that God has placed on the inside of you. And so you see it as a hiding place, a place among the reeds is not where nobody sees you and you've been trying, but it's a place where you've intentionally run to and hid yourself because you're scared to death of what might happen if you actually fulfill the potential that God's placed on the inside of you. And I need, I need to talk to somebody in the room that feels scared in their spirit to take a step of faith. I, I need you to understand this morning that what God has for you and the dreams and the plans that he's placed inside of your heart will never be lived out in the hiding. You're going to have to come out and step out in faith and say, okay, God, I I may not know what the future holds, but I know that if you're with me, I'm going to be okay. I feel a drawing out coming. I I feel God drawing some people out today, drawing you out of the reeds when you feel like nobody sees you. I feel like you're gonna start to understand today through the word of God that people do care about you, that you are loved. Even if nobody tells you, your heavenly father loves you and sees you right where you are. I feel a drawing out coming for those of you that are scared and intimidated by the future, that God is pulling it out and he's saying, I've got something on the inside of you that if you will trust me, listen, if you stay in the hiding, that safe place, that secret place is the place where your potential will go to die. Hey, Moses, I know know you were hiding in a basket. I know it was a safe place, a place of comfort. And don't get me wrong, Moses, it served its purpose wonderfully for a season. But Moses, I don't know if you've noticed, (laughs) you're too big for the basket now. Your feet are starting to hang over the edge of the basket, Moses, and it's time for me to draw you out from that safe place, from that comfort place. And guess what, Moses, I'm about ready to upgrade you if you'll be willing to get out of the basket. See, he doesn't draw you out to downgrade you. He draws you out to upgrade you. Moses, if you'll, if you'll allow me to draw you out of the basket, I'm about to upgrade you to the palace, Moses. Hey, Moses, you were upgraded to the palace. Fantastic. It served his purpose wonderfully for a season. You were given the finest education in the land. You were taught all the inside information of the Egyptians, but you were never meant to stay in the palace either, Moses. And oh, let me preach for a second. See, the palace is comfortable. The palace, you have kind of what you need. You're, you're sustained. It could be you could stay in the palace and make a nice life for yourself, 
But I feel the Lord whispering in some of your ears that you weren't meant for the palace either, that he's about to draw you out of the palace. But here's the thing. It's hard to be drawn out of the palace because you don't know what's next. Wait, you're going to draw me out of the palace to be the leader of the Israelites. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people will look to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moses, this is the most unbelievable upgrade that you'll ever experience. See, I put something on the inside of you, Moses, that was not meant to stay in a basket, and I had to draw you out of that, and then I upgraded you into the palace, and as great as that was, now it requires a new level of faith of you trusting me because you don't know what tomorrow holds. But guess what? If I upgrade you, and if I did it once, I'm not gonna downgrade you. I'm gonna level you up again. See, Moses, I haven't just called you to gain wisdom and knowledge in the palace. I've called you to go take what you've learned and go lead thousands and thousands of people, and your name will go down in history for what you accomplished for me. Will you be willing to leave the comfort place of the palace? And all these places are necessary for a season. It's interesting that Moses' life was a perpetual, like you get somewhere and then you're pulled out. There's this drawing out all throughout his life. You know, when, when our kids go anywhere, we go out of town or they're going to a friend's house, we always tell them, we use this phrase, hey, remember your name. And what that represents for us is, listen, remember who you are. Remember what we've instilled in you. And take that when you walk out into this world. And I just, I, I got to thinking the other day reading this story. I wonder if Moses, who was upgraded from the basket to the palace, and the palace to leading thousands and thousands of people, that one day he found himself standing on the edge of the Red Sea, no way forward, the Egyptians coming behind him, ready to murder him. There's no, I wonder if, if by chance, again, I can't prove this biblically. It's just kind of what went through my mind. I wonder if Moses standing in front of the Red Sea went back to what his name meant and realized if you pulled me out of the water when I was a baby, I know there may be water in front of me, but you're going to deliver me from this water too. I, I just wonder if he went back, because his name, there's a perpetual drawing out. And if he's done it once for you, he's not going to stop on you now. If he did it for me then, he's been doing it my whole life. Why would he stop doing it for me now? And then for some of you, here's the third group of people as I close. I told you I was going to get you out of here pretty close to on time. It's not a place where you feel like nobody sees you. That, that's for some people in the room. And then there's other people that feel like they have put themselves in this hiding place and they've hid themselves because they're, they're nervous and intimidated. But then there's, there's another group of people that when you hear this story, this is... This is where you go in your mind, and it's where a lot of people have gone this weekend through freedom and through water baptism. Let me read this scripture to you. John chapter 6, verse 44. For no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me. So here's what you feel today. You feel your heavenly Father drawing you out of an old way of living into, into a better way of living your life. That, that's where you're, you're going this morning in your mind. And guess what? 
There was 154 people to this weekend, listen, listen, that felt the Lord drawing them out of an old way of living into, into the waters of baptism and then drawing them out of the waters of baptism, the Bible says, into newness of life. It's what happened. It's what happened with 200 people that went through Freedom Conference this weekend. They felt the Lord saying, hey, I need you to go on this journey with me. I'm drawing you out of the bondage that has been holding you captive for so long. There's a drawing out coming in your life, and I'm ready to start moving you in a different direction if you'll be open to it. And I wonder today, for those of you that fit that category, if you will be willing to allow the Lord to draw you out and draw you closer to himself today. He's drawing you. He's, do you feel the draw of his presence today? That old way of thinking and talking hasn't served you well. I'm pulling something out of you that you didn't even know was there. See, there's somebody that's walked in here for the first time today that has no clue about the love of Jesus Christ. And for the very first time, you're starting to even feel right now, what am I feeling? What, what is this? Friend, can I tell you that's the love of Jesus Christ that you feel right now? You feel his presence and he's drawing it out of you and you didn't even know it was there and it's making you a little bit nervous right now but I wonder if you would continue to take those steps of faith and see where he leads you when he draws you he will never downgrade you you have been living a downgraded life but a life with Jesus is a perpetual upgrade he's got so much more in store for you if you'll give him a chance remember your name Revelation 2 and 17, as I close, says this, to him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will, give, I will give him a white stone, and on the stone, a new name, which no one knows except he who receives it. The book of Revelation, when it was written, a white stone was equivalent with innocence, if you were tried for a crime, a white stone signified acquittal, and a darker stone signified a guilty verdict. So to receive a white stone meant that you were free from condemnation. It meant that you had been tried and you had been found worthy. And somebody in this house today is about to get a white stone and a new name. You've been walking through life and for the very first time today, you have come to the realization that there is somebody who can do so much more for you than you can do for yourself. And that, that man's name is Jesus Christ. And Jesus died for you. He was buried and he rose again. And he's ready to give you a new name today. He's ready for you to not feel condemned and not feel condemnation in your life, but he wants you to remember your name, and he's handing you a stone today, and he's saying, you are not an alcoholic. You are not a failure of a spouse. You are not an awful parent. You are not what they said about you as a kid. You are my child, and that is your name. You have been tried, and you have been found worthy in my sight. I love you, and I care for you more than you can begin to imagine. Remember your name. You're my child. And I take good care of my children. Being his child means you're royalty. Stop treating yourself like you're anything less than God's child. Stop talking about yourself in a way that would demean the name of God because you're his kid. Don't believe the lies of the enemy any longer. Remember your name. A white stone found worthy and a new name. You are a child of God. Listen, here's, 
Here's how that happens for you. Are you ready? Would you stand with me all across the room? Here's the beauty of it. You are a child of God, whether you know Jesus or not. You're his child, and he loves you. But listen, here's the beauty of our Savior is that he loves you so much that he doesn't want you to stay where you are. And that's why he's drawing you closer to him today. He's drawing it out of you today. And he's, he's ready for you to live an upgraded life. If you'll just say, Jesus, I'll follow you. I'm tired of doing it my way. I've been doing it my way and look where I'm at. I found myself at a church on a Sunday morning saying, Lord, I can't do it by myself. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I have nowhere else to turn. If that's you, every head bowed, every eye closed. If that's you, maybe you've never said yes to Jesus. And today you want to say, you know what, Jesus, I want to try following you for the rest of my life. If that's you, would you just slip your hand heavenward? I want to know who to pray for today. Wow. Wow. And your prayer doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Come on, it's, it's from your heart that matters. He wants to hear from you. But it should sound something like this. Come on, pray something like this with me if that's you. Jesus, I love you today. God, I honor you. I don't, I don't pretend to know where this journey's going to take me. I don't know what it looks like. But Lord, I know that I can't do it on my own anymore. I've tried, and I've tried, and I've tried, and I find myself in the same place every single time, and I'm ready to give you a chance today. I'm ready to make you the Lord of my life because I know, and I heard your word today preached, that you don't ever downgrade your children. You always upgrade, and I feel you drawing me to you today, even though I don't even know how to exactly put my finger on it. I don't even know that that's what I would call it, but, but now that the preacher's saying that, it makes sense. That's what I feel today. So today, Lord, I repent of my sins. I'm so sorry for trying to do it on my own. And today, I walk into your arms of grace, knowing that you have tried me and you have found me worthy, that you love me. When nobody else in my life seems to love me, you do, and you care about me. And so today, I choose to follow you from this day forward, and whatever you have for me, I want it, Lord. I'm open to it. I saw some people being water baptized. I don't even know what that means, but, but I'm open to it. I heard them talk about people being filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I don't know what all that means, but I want that too, Lord. I want every upgrade that you have for me. So today I commit to following you with everything that I have. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said amen. Come on, can you put your hands together for the Lord today? Thank you, Jesus. Come on, celebrate. What an amazing service. On behalf of our pastoral team, leadership team, and staff, we want to thank you for tuning in to Christian Life Austin online. We pray that this service remains in your heart and helps lead you to your next steps on your faith journey. And we want to take a moment to allow you the opportunity to give your life to Jesus. If you've never made that choice before, whether you're watching us in your living room, your kitchen, or on vacation, we know that Jesus will meet you right where you are. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And if you want salvation today, it's as simple but as powerful as confessing Jesus as Lord of your life and having faith that God raised him from the dead. So let's take a moment right here and right now to pray together. Would you join me? Lord Jesus, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this day and for this time. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that there are hearts that are hungry for more of you and that are looking, God, to take their next step. So right now, we pray that this prayer be the next step in people's lives today. God, we repent of all of our sins. We are sinners saved by grace. 
So Lord, cleanse us and wash us and purify us, God, of all of our sins. God, we confess with our mouth that you are the Lord of our life. From this day forward, we are putting you first as Lord of our life. God, we acknowledge and we understand that you died, that you were buried and that you rose again. Lord, we thank you for what you did for us on Calvary. Lord Jesus, from this day forward, we are putting you first and we're putting our trust in you, Lord. We thank you for all the life change that is happening right here and now. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Wow, congratulations to all of you who made the decision to give your life to Jesus. All of heaven is celebrating with you. And hey, we're celebrating with you too. But no, this is only step one. We want you to know that you're not alone on this walk. And we're not leaving you to figure it out by yourself. We want to partner with you as you walk through our core values, which is know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference in the lives of others. We would love to help you take your next step, whether that's through water baptism or joining a life group or getting plugged in serving through Growth Track. We have everything you need to make this process easy, accessible, and applicable to you in your life. No matter what stage of life you're in, you are somebody at Christian Life Austin and you are somebody to the kingdom of heaven. We want to know what your next step is and we want to hear from you if you gave your life to Jesus today. Please click the link in the description so we can get connected with you. Again, thank you for tuning in and we cannot wait to see you in person at Christian Life Austin.